How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Group Mike here. Today we've got another special plane for you. We're still on Lancers by the way. Behind me is the Lancer 360. Stay tuned, we're gonna check it out. The Lancer Speed Machines. We've reviewed the 320 and if this looks any similar to the 320, that's because it is. This is the refined version of the 320. You already know the history of Lancers. It's an experimental build, and you typically will buy a kit to build and put this airplane together. Now, with the 320, the 360, or the Legacy as they call them, uh, you buy these planes because you want to go places fast. Okay, this is not your beginner's pilot airplane. I will reiterate that, okay? This is not an airplane you jump into with low time. This is an airplane that's more for the skillful pilot and a pilot who knows how to keep up with speed because this is a speed machine. Now, let me tell you what's different mostly about the 360 compared to the 320, which we checked out recently. If you look at the nose here, the power plant in here is the Lycoming IO 360. But this one has an IO 375. It's a 360, but powered up to 375. So you've got about 210 horsepower in this airplane. It's still using a two blader prop, as you can see here. Very neat. Uh, but this thing will pull this airplane to go over 200 knots. But quickly, check out the design here, you've got retractable landing gear. As you can see also that this airplane is lower to the ground compared to the four-seater which we checked out earlier. As a matter of fact, that four-piece is sitting right in front of us right now. So that's a more sizable plane. But this airplane, ergonomically designed really well, you can get in very easily. Uh, it is retractable landing gear and once those gears come up, you can really start flying. But quickly, let's check out the interior. And while I walk towards the interior, I want you also to see the wings. You can see that this airplane has short wings for speed, okay? All of that is for speed. And I wouldn't say you can do aerobatics in these, but Lancers, especially the 360 and the Legacy models, they use them for racing often. So this is a very sporty airplane. And you could, it's really nimble. It's very touchy and sensitive. So again, a beginner's pilot, this is not the plane for you. But a more skillful pilot, you can definitely handle this plane if you love speed. But what I love the most about this particular model is this interior. You can see that the owner did not spare anything in designing this. Now also, you should know that it took him eight years to finish this airplane. And we'll talk to him. We'll talk to him and find out what his experience was like. And I try to tell you guys, when you're going the experimental route, because oftentimes I've been asked, you know, why are you going through a build assist? Why won't you build the airplane yourself? Well, because of this, you know, it can take that long to finish building an airplane. And this airplane officially took its first flight in 2017. And so far, there's about 300 hours on it. But let's check it out. So in the interior here, you see the panel full glass. You've got the Garmin G3X Touch dual screen. And what you see here are cameras. So these are like backup cameras and you can get them for like really cheap. These are like 15, 20 bucks. And let me show you. You've got a camera there. You've got a camera to the gear, nose gear, the other side of the gear. So you've got all this cool, <laughs> videos and this is great if you're in flight okay or maybe you're taxiing at night or whatever the case may be that's a front camera that's a backup camera that's the camera to one of the gears i'm not sure if that's the right or the left nose gear and right or left gear very neat so in flight you can actually use this just to make sure your gears are up or down but quickly if we go through the panel from this side, you've got vent here, your air vents. And you can tell this probably even came from a, a car. It looks really neat. And ooh, look how fancy. Engine start. I've always fancied this, guys. And I think our airplane should have this now. Obviously, everyone has their opinion about push to start, but I think we're in 2020. I think push to start should be a standard. 
but I like it on this airplane. You've got your electric switches down here too. And I love this touch is where the things lit up. Very nice. Um, on this side, actually you come to the middle, you've got your Garmin G5, that's a backup. And you've got your landing gear switch there. This will tell you, the lights will indicate if the landing gear are down or up. And you've got an autopilot also, right there. You've got your second screen, your circuit breakers, and you come to the middle here. Now I want you to pay attention to what you've got here. This is actually the first I'm seeing. Normally I would see maybe two levers here, or three, but today I've seen four. So you've got air brakes. You know why you need these? Because <laughs> again, this airplane can go really fast, so air brakes can help you slow down. You've got your throttle there, the blue levers for your prop. This airplane uses a constant speed prop, and then you've got your mixture, which is the red lever there. But it's all packed now. Ergonomically, I'm not sure how that feels when you're flying one of these. Um, if you have really big hands, I don't know how this may collide with each other, but we'll talk to the owner and find out what his experience has been like. And he, as you can see, leather interior in here. I love this. Uh, control sticks. These are Tustins. Uh, they're really neat. You'll find some of these actually in the slings. Uh, and the cool thing about these um, sticks is that, or these grips, you have quite a few buttons that you can use for different functions. Okay, you've got a button here or switch here. This could be used for your flaps. You've got this here. This could be used to turn your autopilot on and off. Or then, oop, you can hear that. That's your trim. Okay, if you hear a sound, that's a motor for the trim, so you've got that for your trim. And I'm not sure what this uh, switch is used for, but you could also use this maybe for your push to start. So you've got quite a bit to play with, and in the back here, you've also got another switch. So these are really, really neat. And then also ergonomically, something you may not think about is when you rest your hand on this. Again, I flew in a TSI with this exact uh, grip and I could tell the difference when I could just rest my hand on this so again very nicely designed and it really makes flying more comfortable now when you sit in this airplane you're sitting somewhat inclined okay it's a sporty airplane and depending on your size now I've seen even people on the bigger side fly Atlanta 360 I'm not the biggest dude in the world as a matter of fact if I climb in here So, when you're sitting here, guys, you're, you're sort of inclined. Your, your feet and your legs are raised up a little bit towards the nose. And it's the same thing if you were looking at this airplane from the outside. You notice that the nose is just, it's tipped up slightly. So your legs go kind of like that. You, you kind of drop down in the middle here. And in terms of comfort level, I would say this cabin is, is very cozy, even for a guy like me. And again, this is one of those planes that may feel like you're wearing it. Because once this canopy closes, and as a matter of fact, let me, let me try and close it right now. Now, I still have a good amount of headroom here. So you wouldn't feel that claustrophobic in here. But I will say that even without somebody sitting right next to me I can feel out just plush and cozy uh, this interior space is and you've got some you've got a hand rest or elbow rest in the middle now remember what I was saying earlier about the control levers here now my hands I think the size of your hand will matter in this situation because I'm looking at my hands right now I can for me to move this let me go back for me to move this this is where my hand would naturally rest not here now I could probably learn to keep my elbows and my arm here but naturally I feel more comfortable over here and again and that's me using the uh, the throttle the levers maybe if I was like this and I could push it again you probably learn how to properly fly this things but if you're looking to get into a 360 like this one 
these are some of the things you may need to think about. And then you go to the back here, you've got a ton of room for your baggage back there. This is a two seater, so uh, you'll be going fast, but you wouldn't have a lot of room to carry people or baggage. You could probably carry another passenger and be able to go just as fast and go distant places. But like I said, it's, it's quite cozy in here, so take your time. One thing I did want to mention, guys, with the 360, you notice there's no climb up or step up uh, to get in this plane. Again, if you look at it from the front, it's pretty low to the ground, so really you can just step up and get into the airplane. Or, if you prefer, you may put a step up uh, to the airframe here. But, if you look at this then, it's a very light plane. <laughs> It's a very light airplane, short wings, long nose, likes to go fast. That's why you buy a 360 or you build one. Uh, and this one, like I said, took eight years for the builder to put it together. Uh, let me turn all of this then off. There we go. Now in terms of your performance, as I mentioned earlier, this airplane will cruise north of 200 knots. And this is at low altitude, by the way. You can just fly this thing straight out, and you'd be over 200 knots. But the normal cruise altitude, you can go up to 7,000 feet, and you see maybe 205, 210. And with that, you're burning about 12 gallons of fuel per hour. And some pilots have even said they burn less. It all depends on how you work that mixture and your prop lever and you may be able to save some more fuel with this airplane. Now the type of fuel it sips, 100 low lead. And those can be either up and down, depending on where you are in the country. So, but the Lancet 360 or the 320, uh, these are some of the most fuel efficient airplanes. If you know how to fly them, they're definitely worth a look at. This airplane as built, you're looking at 150, maybe a little over $200,000. Now you can find older Lance Airs for less money, even $100,000 or less. But the 360, they usually sell for more because again, these are the newer versions. It's a more refined design and you have a bigger engine in there to let you go faster. Okay guys, so we've checked out three Lance Airs so far. I hope you guys enjoy this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe to Mojo Grip if this is your first time. Thank you all so much for watching. A great way to support the channel. Become a premium member or go on mojogrip.net forward slash MVP and become a member there.